Thanks so much, Sandra. I'm assuming everybody can see my screen and everything okay? Excellent. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to share with you all today, creating custom PDFs using a gem called Prawn. Um, again, I'm Stephanie Wiggins. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a developer with a design background, which is a perspective that I infuse into the work that I do. And I suspect you will be, you will hear hinted at today. Imagine you are a pediatric cancer research scientist on the cusp of better understanding drivers and say, for example, neuroblastoma. And all that stands between you and new samples to run your analysis against is a daunting 12 page legal document requiring you to collect a half a dozen to a dozen signatures. Now, imagine you're on the product team for the site that houses these samples and you understand firsthand how complicated this legal document can be as you're constantly answering support tickets about it. You really wish you could empower your users to spend more time on their analysis and less time on the legal document. That would be a win-win. And finally, imagine you are a developer who works for the site that houses these, these samples and you know how to build just the tool that would help. What if you were able to create a multi-step form whereby you could collect the user's information, infuse it into the legal document and return it all back to the user. So all they had to do was print and collect the signatures. And this my friends was my situation. So how should I go about creating this PDF? When embarking on this journey, I considered two options. The first option was a gem that transforms HTML into a PDF using a gem called PDF Kit. Under the hood, it wraps a command line tool of, of WebKit HTML to PDF. And this option would be really great if I already had a view on my site and I wanted to extend that page's functionality in order to allow our users to print that page. However, in my case, I did not have and I was not going to have a view on my site for this document. Instead, I was relying on a word processor document that I wanted to create a pixel perfect representation of. So instead, I opted for a pure Ruby library using a gem called Prawn, and which we'll be looking at today. I found this gem really easy to use and quick to set up, and building this feature was my first end to end feature in Rails. So it holds a special place in my heart. You can get started really quickly with only a few lines of code, and I'll show you here momentarily. This gem comes with built-in methods that would help accomplish a task like mine to be able to start a new page and move a cursor down on the page. But because it's all built in Ruby, you can continue to use all of the logic and conditionals and Ruby goodness you know and love. Here's a link to their GitHub. And finally, take note of their documentation. It's a 108 page guide built using the PDF, built using the gem itself. And while you might first think 108 pages, that's a little overwhelming. I found it really approachable. I could command F to look for the topic and I was greeted with context and examples and felt empowered to be able to go use that myself. To get started, let's look at how to create this Hello World PDF. As promised, it's only a few lines of code. So let's take a look. We pull in the gem, we call the generate method, we pass in some text, hello world, we draw a circle or a world if you will, and that's all it takes. In order to grasp one other fundamental concept, let's zoom into the line that draws the circle. And you'll notice that we first pass in 250 and 300, and you might be wondering what that's doing. Prawn is built on a coordinate system where the origin or 00, zero is in the bottom left corner. So in our, in our example, we are telling Prawn, hey, start drawing the circle at 250, 300 and make it 200 pixels big. It's a little bit of a mind shift when, for my case, I would be thinking about starting at the top left corner rather than the bottom left corner. But after a little bit of trial and error and understanding this concept, it was smooth sailing from there. Equipped with this knowledge of the underlying framework, let's consider some pieces from my legal document in order to demonstrate some of Prawn's other features. My first order of business was to pop in all of the text from the legal document and format it appropriately. So let's start by taking a look at this header, overview of the agreement. We define the text, and then we can pass in several arguments in order to style it. 
In my example, we are passing in the font style of bold. However, you could also italicize the text as I did at the top of the page. Then I pass in a size parameter and the variable containing the increased size as defined at the top of my class. Note that being able to style and define these styles as variables was one of my favorite features of using this gem, as it means I don't have to remember how big my font size is for my body copy versus my headers, or how many pixels to move down after a paragraph break, like I do on the next line, versus a section break. This time-saving feature helped me create a clean and consistently styled document. My next task was to add a header to every page in the document. So that is what this first line, repeat all, is doing. It's saying, place this element on each page. Then we come to a bounding box. So imagine you're in PowerPoint and you want to add a text box to your slide. You would go up to the text box icon and then you would click and you would drag on the slide in order to tell PowerPoint where you want that text box to appear. The bounding box is the exact same. It's just a content holder. So we would select a bounding box just like we would select a text box. And then we position it. Instead of by clicking and dragging, we're passing in our coordinates. In this case, my coordinates are a little bit veiled as I'm relying on the edges of the content for prawn called the bounds in order to push this content all the way to the size and to the top. I next pass in a version number and an effective date, just like we did in our last example of calling variables. And this is super nice as I can define these variables again at the top of my class and then any time that it's being used, whether it's in this bounding box or in the body copy itself, um, it is calling that same date and version number. This ensures consistency and makes it easier to maintain down the road. And finally, we come to my favorite feature. Remember our user? We still need to get their information into the PDF to empower them to spend more time running their analysis and less time on this document. So we give them a form, we collect their information, and then how do we get it into the PDF? We pull in their information just like we would any other user input data or data in our app. In this case, we're calling the user form input variable. We just simply call the variable that the data is saved within. You'll notice that this is wrapped in a special kind of bounding box called a formatted text box, which is another method in Prawn's library. And using it, I'm, help, I'm able to help the user distinguish between the legal document, which is in the sans serif font, and the information that they have provided by restyling it as a monospace font. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the Prawn Gem and feel equipped to be able to dive into it yourself. To make things easy, here's a list of resources that I used throughout my presentation. If I can help in any way, please reach out to me on the WNB Slack. I'm happy to take a look at this gem with you or another project in order to learn and grow together. Thanks.